Hey guys, Dan Carr here from Shuttermuse.com. Today we are taking a look at the Peak Design Field Pouch V2. Now, the original Field Pouch was launched many years ago with the original Peak Design Everyday Messenger Bag. Now we have a V2, I thought we would do a video so I can walk you through all the features, compare it to the old version and just tell you what it's good for, what it's not good for. So let's start with a run through of all the features. We'll start on the front, 400D nylon, all over this bag. So this is the same stuff that they make all of their messenger bags, sling bags, backpacks out of. Extremely tough, highly weather resistant, DWR coated nylon, so water basically just runs right off this thing. It has some structure to it, but it still has a good amount of flexibility. So you can kind of tuck this into slots within your bag, into a zippered pocket on the top of your backpack. It's not as rigid as some of their other accessory bags like the Peak Design Tech Pouch. So that is a nice thing if you want to slot it into a smaller space. We have some leather detailing on the front here as Peak Design likes to do. This looks really cool. Nice contrast with this midnight blue color. There's a charcoal version and a black version of this. At least at the time I'm making the video, Peak Design have a habit of adding additional colors throughout the life of a product. So check the website to see what the current colors are that are available. Uh, on the back here, we have kind of a double belt loop system. If you're gonna run this on just a regular size belt on your pants, if you wanted to do that, you'd use this smaller slot here. If you wanna try and put this on the belt of a backpack, on the hip belt of a backpack, you have a larger pass through there, which might be handy for that purpose. Now, on the front here, hook and loop. As we can see, a long strip here means that we can actually tack this up the top like that, so you can get a larger volume, or you can pull it down, cinch it up tight, and stick it down on the bottom like that. So we basically have an adjustable volume here. It's either 1.5 liters at its smallest or three liters at its largest point. So that's kind of cool. Uh, now we're inside it, we can see, hopefully you can see this on the video, um, the internal pocket system has changed a little bit from the original. I would say that is the biggest change on this bag. We now have a big zippered pocket here, as you can see that. So we have the main section, and then we have this full width zipper, which takes us into this other fairly large pocket. This is a stretchy pocket, so you can put uh, items in there that are odd shapes, and it'll just bulge the pocket and um, still keep that tidy, which is pretty handy. I like a stretchy pocket. Then along the top here, this really is a little tricky to see, but we have basically these smaller little stretchy pockets. So these things are good for uh, USB sticks, memory cards, things like that. I think there are, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five little pockets in there inside this other zippered pocket. And if I spin this around, you can see in there we have three additional stretchy pockets there as well. So all these little pockets are good for things like uh, your lightning cable or your USB cable for your phone, little USB battery pack, things like that. And then you just have this large section in the middle, which is just about uh, big enough for a small camera. So maybe a Sony X100, uh, Fuji, sorry, Sony, uh, what are those things called, RX100 or a Fuji X100. So a small kind of fixed lens camera like that. Um, in fact, hold on one second. Just by way of size demonstration, I'll grab a camera and a lens here. Now I, this is a Sony mirrorless body. This bag is not big enough to put a lens on the Sony mirrorless body, but most people are familiar with how big this is. So by way of a size demonstration, I'll just tuck it in there. Uh, you can see that that fits quite nicely in there. So imagine if this was a, a Fuji X100 with its very small built-in lens, that would easily fit there. And uh, that would actually be a nice, a nice little bag for that. I don't have an X100 anymore, I used to. Um, and in fact, I did use it in the original version of this bag. So from a dimensions point of view, this version two is identical to the original version of the bag. So if you're used to the size of the old one, you know exactly how big this is gonna be. Uh, you could also use this with a lens. I've got a 24 millimeter f1.4 in there. So if you are carrying 
your camera over your shoulder on a camera strap and you want to carry an additional lens with you, uh, yeah, you could pop a lens or even maybe two lenses in there if you figured out some way to stop them banging into each other. But uh, primarily this is designed for kind of your general everyday accessories, uh, spare batteries, memory card wallet, things like that, USB charger, camera charger, that sort of stuff. Another big change from the original version of this bag though, is that they now include a small shoulder strap with it. So on the previous version, what you would do is you'd use uh, Peak Design's anchor quick release system and you would use one of their camera straps with the bag. Now, that did work well, but it meant that you had to spend another 30 or $40 on a camera strap if you wanted to actually use this as a small shoulder bag. So that's not ideal. Uh, what they've done this time is they have increased the overall price of the product by $5, but they do now include this basic shoulder strap with it. So I think that's a fair trade-off. Uh, it's, not, it's not a very thick strap as you can see, so you're not gonna wanna weight this down, but then there isn't the space in this bag to have a lot of weight in it anyway. And it just clips onto these little loops in the corner there, just like that. Now, if you do own a Peak Design camera strap, you can definitely put your anchor quick releases onto this little loop. Let me take this off for a second. Yeah, you could definitely put the anchors on there and you could use uh, a Peak Design camera strap with this or any other camera strap that you think you can attach to this loop somehow. So if you wanted something thicker with a bit more padding, take a bit more weight than the included camera strap, you can definitely do that. So, you know, this is a simple little accessory bag. So there's really not too much more to say about this. Price is $45 has all of the usual kind of quality and feel from a Peak Design product. And it's a little bit smaller than the Peak Design Tech Pouch, which is their other very popular kind of tech EDC carrying case. So if you want something a little bit smaller, a uh, common complaint about the Tech Pouch is that it is a little bit large. So if you want something smaller, then you have the Field Pouch. Oh, wait, hang on. There's one other feature I must tell you. I almost forgot about the fact that it is, is compatible with the Peak Design camera clip. So if you have one of these things, I'm sure you know what this is by now. They are pretty well known within the industry and much copied by many other companies these days. If you have one of these camera clips, then there are two rails on this bag. So I'll stick my finger through so you can see where it is. You see that right there? So there's one on one side and one on the other side. On the old version of this bag, the V1, there was just one of these in the middle. So now we have, well, let's just go ahead and put it on here so you can see how it goes. Um, we just stick there. Okay, there we go. So now you have this uh, camera clip on the side there, so you can put it on either side depending on how you're carrying this. So if you're carrying it on your left side or your right side, you'll wanna use one or the other of the little rails for the capture clip. So, um, you know, uh, there's always a caveat with this camera clip because you're obviously gonna hang the weight at a slightly awkward angle off this bag. So don't put a pro body with a 70 to 200 on this. You know, at most think about putting a 24 to 70 on it, uh, 24 to 105 F4, something like that. And of course, now you have the option of uh, using the included shoulder strap. So you can put a spare lens in the pouch and then clip your camera to the outside using the capture clip. So that's a neat, um, difference from the previous one. I feel like on the first version where it was in the middle there, it was uh, slightly awkward. So having it on the side, either side, is an improvement. All right, that's about all there is to say about this. Again, Peak Design Field Pouch version two. Uh, hit the link up in the corner if you wanna look at the, the review that's on the website because there's a bunch of photos on there with different gear in the pouch. And, uh, and also there's a link in the description below for the review of this and the review of the tech pouch as well if you wanna compare the two side by side. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.